this week in real estate. I just wanted to kind of talk to you about what's happening in the banking world uh, and the continued volatility that we've been seeing. Uh, it really makes a difference for us here in the North Bay uh, and the Bay Area with uh, First Republic being in the news as often as it is. Obviously, it's a very large regional bank for us. But also globally, Credit Suisse is also having significant issues. And I want to kind of explain why and what the impact is and how it has affected uh, the banks in their current states and how it could affect every bank that we have in the country. But the reality is it's probably not going to happen. So Credit Suisse uh, is an $800 billion bank. It is four times or more than four times as large as what Silicon Valley Bank was. Um, and they're having issues of liquidity. Uh, when we talk about liquidity, we talk about cash on hand and the ability to pay people when they want to come and take their money out of the bank. And so the Swiss government has given Credit Suisse First Boston, uh, or Credit Suisse, a um, $50 billion, which uh, euro or, or Swiss franc, I forget what it was, was, but it's equivalent of $54 billion dollars of a line of credit so that they can borrow against that to help their depositors and help the bank shore up its financials and liquidity. Uh, during this time, uh, starting Thursday into Friday and now still negotiating today, UBS, a $1.1 trillion bank, is looking at it as a really good opportunity to take over Credit Suisse as a uh, to build and become a $2 trillion bank. Uh, and, and massive expansion um, and growth and buying the bank at pennies on the dollars to what its stock was even just a few days ago. I mean, it's down almost 75 to 80% of what it was just a few days ago. So again, they're looking at trying to grow really easily and really really quickly, sorry, at a inexpensive price. Similarly, locally here, First Republic Bank is also having liquidity issues similarly to what happened with uh, Silicon Valley Bank. And what the banks in America have done, is not the government, but the banks in America have done, is they've deposited $30 billion into First Republic to make sure that it is going to survive and it is going to have no issues really on liquidity. And again, all of this starts off with liquidity. And it reminds me of the movie It's a Wonderful Life, when people are trying to get their deposits out of the bank and George Bailey's in the lobby and talking about like, what do you really need? And like to pay the bills for this week and, and to explaining that um, the deposits that people make are lent out to uh, buy a home or help grow a business or build a business. And more commonly, I mean, when you use your credit card, the banks pay your bills for 30 days before you actually have to pay that bill. So the bank is in the process and how they make their money is by lending out the money that we go and deposit into banks. Banks don't just make loans. Banks have to make the loans off the money that has been deposited into that bank. And so what happens with any bank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase, I don't care what the bank is. If everybody all at once went to take out all the deposits at any bank, that bank would fail. And the issue is right now is that the fear that is being portrayed in the marketplace is really uh, causing people to have anxiety about that. And the safest place for you is to keep your money in the banks because under your mattress is not a great place. I mean, maybe you move it from one bank to the other. But overall, there isn't a fatal flaw in our banking system. And yes, there's going to be one or two banks that are a little bit over leveraged and they have liquidity issues. However, it was created this way because when interest rates have gone up so fast in the last year, that long term debt that the banks were lending out. And so they own that asset of that loan. Well, they were lending out a year ago at 3%. And now it was 7%. And so that loan becomes less valuable. And so that they had to take a hit on their assets and their books, which affected the liquidity of what that value of those loans are. And so again, 
I think that this is a learning point for a lot of people and it's a lot of, I mean, management at banks and how to better kind of ladder their money on, on how, um, how many fixed income or fixed interest rate loans that they have for long periods of times. Maybe they put too many on their books um, in the, over the past three years when the federal government kept rates at two to three percent. However, the federal government is also the people who raised rates up to seven percent to fight inflation that really put the banks in this bad situation. So understand that I think that the federal government is not going to be raising rates. And in fact, the mortgage uh, entities of the federal government, uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, are on board with significantly lowering 30-year mortgages because in the last week, we've seen rates go from seven and a quarter percent down to six and a half, and I've seen quotes even as low as 6%. So the rates are dropping precipitously, and it is really important to understand this marketplace for financing, uh, if you're buying a house with financing, because it is going to get uh, incredibly interesting over the next few weeks uh, as we see this level out. People are going to be able to lock in low rates and uh, take advantage of rates in the six or maybe even below in the near future. Um, also want to remind everybody that we are having our <clears throat> uh, educational series specifically about financing and the buying process. I think that if you haven't bought a house in the last five years and you're thinking about buying or uh, it is a really good opportunity to learn about our new contract, to learn about some of the changes that are very important in the buying process. Uh, and the new financing information that is out there. Um, it'll be myself and Thomas Coakley with Cardinal Financial uh, doing this, and it'll be two hours on the 25th from 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, the link is below. I look forward to seeing everybody there. Have a wonderful weekend. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.